Hey guys, this is Brian with Thunder Laser USA. Um, I've got a test sample here that I'm going to do, and this is going to be a two-part thing. Um, I've got some of these different types of stone that I was sent in, and uh, let's see if we can. Also, I'm going to be uh, testing some of my new systems. Um, I'm now able to uh, switch between sources uh, as we go back and forth. I can We can look at the camera, and I've got uh, a camera also. If it's not upside down, uh, also got this so that we can look around. Um, but anyway, these are the samples um, that I was sent in. So I think what we're going to do is uh, just run over here to uh, Lightburn. And uh, we'll have a look here and see what's going on. So I'm going to update the overlay in... Um, over here, I've got this uh, uh, o2creative.co.nz. Uh, um, it's actually linked uh, in our material test file, our Lightburn material test file. Uh, there's a link to it right here. So I'm just going to use this basic uh, power scale. And what we're looking at over here is uh, wanting to deep engrave on this stuff. So um, that's what we're going to test with. We're going to do it on the Nova 3580, uh, and we're also going to do it on Odin. That's going to be the second part of the test. So I'm just going to go over here to basic power test, and uh, we'll do millimeters per second. I think my minimum range um, probably needs to be about 20% power, um, all the way to 100 we might as well, hey, I don't have that much room. Let's start with 50. And I have uh, min and max power. Minimum speed, let's do 200. Max speed, 600. And we'll do 200 per step. And... Layout is going to be rectangle, and we want those things, uh, and I'm going to have to scale this down, but we're going to have to get this down a little bit so that it'll fit, and uh, I'm going to generate that file, and we'll pull it right over into Lightburn, and let's go back over to this monitor, and now we've got this, so... That only gave me 100% power. What did I do wrong? Oh, min power and max power were the same. The power range, for some reason, didn't stick. Uh, so let me go back over here. So minimum power, 50%. Uh, maximum power, uh, let's do minimum power, 20. And go up in 20. See if that's better. We're going to generate that one. And we'll drag it in. And let's go back over. There it is. Okay, that's better. Um, I don't know if I can get all those to fit on there, but we'll sure give it a try. So first, uh, I'm going to get rid of this. Get rid of this. We're going to know what these are because uh, I'm going to save this file. So I'm going to get rid of that text. All I really want is this. I'm just going to squish it together a little bit. Let's update the overlay. And uh, then you can see we can get these a little bit closer. And if they go off the edge a little, that's okay. But let's shrink these down a little. And I just kind of get them oriented where everything will hopefully give us some sort of result here. So let's look at the cuts and layers for a minute. Um, those are all set to line. I don't want that. I should have fixed that in the file. However, I think the power scale and everything looks like it's going to be the same. Yep, so we're good on that. We need a line interval on this, probably more like 0 0.07 or so. Uh, I just want to tighten it up just a little bit. And I could have set all that stuff in that program. Uh, I've only used that thing about twice. So we'll do fill all shapes at once, and uh, that looks good. We're not going to use air, or we're going to use low air, rather. 
So that ought to get us pretty close. That's um, uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. That's the percentage going this way. And this is 200, 400, and 600 millimeters per second. So I think we're just going to send that over to the machine. And come back over here. And let's see, let's go over here for a minute. We'll go to file. Let's uh, go to the control panel. And we're going to choose that one. And let's go back here. And I want to frame it. And uh, one of my other neat little things is Ruida. Um, there is a remote control uh, for that as well. So you can control your laser uh, if you've got an Ethernet. So that's another thing that I'm playing with. Anyway, uh, there's no autofocus. That's what I was looking for. I don't see an autofocus on there. So I'm still going to have to go into, and if you'll notice, um, go back to the control panel. If you'll notice, you might be able to see those offsets. You see how those look like they're offset. Uh, that's intentional. Uh, those are my scanning offset adjustments that have been entered. So it's making adjustments for that. Uh, so that's, that's, that's typical. You're supposed to see that. So I'm just going to go back over to the camera and uh, let's frame it real quick. And let's focus it real quick. Go to autofocus. Okay. And let's run it and see what happens. Now I'm going to uh, do that on the rest of them too, but I wanted to do at least just one uh, before I did the full Monty on all of them, uh, just to kind of get an idea. And I may need to do some adjustments. Oh no, it's firing. It's just, you just can't see it. Let me switch back over to it so you guys can see what's going on. So, oops. I'll get back to that one. I'm still learning this uh, system, so you'll have to bear with me uh, on some of that. Uh, actually, I need to get turned around here and then turn my screen rotation back off. Uh, and then if we go over, there we go. Now, now we can use the tab cam. So while that's running, um, I've got a camera here, uh, and then I've also got the light burn camera, and it's used exclusively for just, uh, light burn. I don't use it as a video source uh, for this stuff. Uh, one of the reasons is because it changes the aspect ratio and the resolution uh, in the software. It acts really goofy if you uh, virtually clone that uh, USB in, in the various ways that I've tried and uh, it screws with the alignment. So uh, I just have a separate camera here uh, for this, uh, which is this view. And uh, man, that thing's going, isn't it? Uh, and then, of course, we got the main main camera. I've got one here on the control panel also uh, so that we can see what's going on. And there's the view of it in real time. So, And then, of course, I can do my splash screen and we can go back through the intro again. So uh, there's a lot of other stuff that I can uh, add, a lot of sources, but I don't want to get too fancy. But all right, let's see what the results are going to be on this. Uh, let me go back over to the center cam. And I don't have my USB uh, oh, wow. There's some incredible depth there. I'm going to keep running. I'm going to keep recording. Uh, let's go back over here for a minute. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it good with the tab cam, but let's give it a shot. Uh, probably not. Uh, let me get the USB microscope going, so uh, bear with me just a second here. Okay, so I've got the USB scope connected here, and I'm going to 
try to see if we can uh, focus in on what's going on here. So this is the, let me see if I can find something to point with. This is the uh, cut in the material already. And this and this is an engraving. And there is a good amount of depth there. See, that's one of the squares. Um, let me see if I can find one that's complete. You can see there's where that circle was cut. So, yeah, and that's uh, that's got some decent depth to it already. But over here, let's go back to this one, uh, the very last one, which is this one. If I can rotate this thing, I may have to adjust my focus again uh, to get it right. I'm trying to stay where you can see it. Let's see. Yeah, let's turn it up this way. Look at that depth. I can measure that, um, but you know, that was the very first try. Um, so now the next thing that we're going to have to tackle, I'm not worried about depth anymore. I'm going to move to something else. Um, let me go back over to my center monitor. So uh, not not worried about depth. Uh, I'm, I may test that on the other materials, but I don't think I'll even have to worry about that. Um, the depth won't be a problem. We'll be able to dial that in easy. The next thing that uh, is going to be of concern is there's some symbols, um, kind of like infinity symbols and, and, and things like that on there. You know, So I, I think if we just make an 8, um, that'll probably get us close enough, and we can stretch it out and rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, and then I'm going to use this for the test. And what I need to do is get with uh, the person that sent these in and see what height uh, the text actually needs to be. Because that height is 1.69 millimeters. Um, so, you know, that's just over two millimeters high right there. So that's the next part of this uh, test is going to be dialing in uh, this small text and seeing how uh, accurate and all of that, we can get it. So that's going to be the next part of the test.